Hey everyone, it's me, Kirk Mastin, here at Mastin Labs in the heart of Seattle. It is a beautiful, rainy, cloudy day, and I hope you are having a great day wherever you are tuning in from. Um, so today we've got a very special show. I'm going to be focusing on one very particular part of our preset system, and that is the tone profile. So the tone profile section is where you can find tools that help you dial in the highlights and the shadows in your images. And they originally came from this Fuji Frontier scanner right over here. You can't see it, it's just outside of the frame, but they actually come from the scanner and it was something that I wanted to emulate and give to you as part of every preset pack and every style pack. Um, because I, you know, my main goal at Masson Labs is not only give you the most accurate and perfect film look, but I want to give you tools that are super easy to use so that you can get the photo that you've always dreamed of. One thing we really, really believe in here is that it shouldn't be complicated to get a beautiful edit and we want to help you. All of the images that I'll be editing today, like in all of our Facebook Live videos, are from our community. So if you're not already part of the Mass Labs community, just type it into your browser uh, in Facebook, Mass Labs Community. Come over and join, and you can be part of, a, of what most people in there call like the friendliest, best, like most helpful group on the internet for photographers. And I'm not just saying that. That's like people are people just say that all the time in the group, and it's absolutely true. So whether or not you are even part of the Mass and Labs family at this point, whether you own everything or nothing, we want to see you in the group because there's a lot of good people there, and we're all about raising each other up to be the best photographer that we can be. So come on over and join us. So let's get started. Uh, and if you miss any of this, or if you're coming in just now, this will be posted again. All of our live edits are always posted again. So if you miss anything, they're gonna be in our library, either on our page or in YouTube under Mass and Labs. So you can always go back and see all of the old ones. So, all right, let's get started. So, Within every pack, we have a few settings that are called tone profiles or tone settings. Like I said, they come from the Fuji Frontier next to me, and I'm gonna go over each one really quickly, and then I'm gonna show you how they affect different images that you've sent in, and how you can use them to solve different lighting problems. So, tone profiles, what they do is they isolate and affect either the highlight area or the shadow area of every photo. They're dynamic. So they are, are really based on um, shadow and highlight uh, retention. And it's a very critical part of emulating film. Film is not just the color palette, it's also the micro contrast and how film reacts to light and retains detail, especially in the, sh in the highlights. Uh, not so much the shadows, that's where digital is really good, but in the highlights. Film can really retain highlights super well. And that model of film is built into what we make. The tone profiles are there to help you tweak your photo, just kind of like the cherry on top at the end, to get just the, the exact right amount of detail in the highlights or shadows, or to give your image a more contrasty, edgier look if you need it. Or if your image has some haze or low uh, contrast, you can bring that back up with the tone profiles. So there are six tone profiles in every pack. There's highlight soft, so what Highlight Soft does is it increases the detail and the range in the highlights without affecting the rest of the photo. Highlight Hard is the opposite. It actually slightly decreases the detail level because it is increasing the contrast in the highlights. Now, sometimes that is exactly what you need to make a photo really pop, especially if you're in kind of a hazy situation. If there's haze in the air or you've got a little bit of a internal reflection in your lens, and you've got some lens flare inside, uh, Highlight Hard can be really useful for that. Shadow Soft is what gives you extra detail and range in the shadows. So I find this one is particularly useful if you're shooting indoors. So if you're in, in a low light situation, kind of a dark and moody situation, you want a little bit of detail in your shadows, but you don't want to bring up the entire image. So that's where that really comes into play. Shadow Hard is 
the opposite of shadow soft. It actually increases the depth and richness and darkness of the shadows. So if you need to make your shadows a little uh, more powerful to, to give a little more pop to your shadows, shadow hard is what you want. The last two settings are combinations of the above. So all soft is highlight soft plus shadow soft in one setting. And what this, this does is that it expands the tonal range of your image the most uh, along the same model that, that actual film would. All soft is super, super popular if you're trying to get a light and airy look, which is about increasing the overall exposure of the image, but maintaining detail in the highlights. And all soft lets you stretch that image out and get all the detail that you can possibly get out of it from shadow to highlight and keep the image really bright, light, and airy. All hard is the opposite of all soft. All hard is great when you want to make the entire image really um, bold. You, you want to increase the, the, the contrast across the entire image. It looks really, really good for fashion-y type images. Uh, if you're shooting in hard light, it can actually look really good. Um, all hard can also work really good indoors, surprisingly. Um, it really depends on the situation. So that's kind of the quick overview. I'm going to use them in a bunch of images now and show you how they work. If at any time you have any questions about what I'm doing, if I'm going too fast, too slow, or you want more detail about something, just put it in the comments and either Kyle or Casey will run over to me with a whiteboard and I will answer your question. All right. So let's get started here. So this image, uh, this image is a great example because it has both lens flare, like a little bit of haze in the image because of the backlighting. And also it's got kind of an extreme contrast range. You've got blown out sky and then it goes through kind of mid-tones to the darkest part of the image, which is in the corner over here with the grass. And I'm gonna do uh, Fuji 400H on this. So there's four, Fuji 400H. I'm gonna drop the exposure a little bit. It's a little bit blown out. If you ever wanna check to see if something is pure white, or pure black, you just hit the J key on your keyboard. And that brings up warnings. Uh, right now, with, with uh, Fuji 400H applied, nothing is pure white. Uh, I'll, I'll try to find pure white. Okay, there we go. You can see a little bit of red appearing up here. When it's bright red, that means it's pure white. Um, actually, let me back up one stop, one stage here. So, no preset applied, I hit the J key you can see the sky is totally blown out. If I hit Fuji 400H from the Fuji original pack, you can see without doing anything else, even though the entire image feels a little overexposed, and it is, I've already brought back almost all the detail in the sky. So that's exactly what I'm talking about, about how all of the presets and styles that we make are based on a film model, which was actually very hard to figure out. And the nice thing about film and, the, and the, the quality that translated through to our product is that it retains highlights really, really well, allowing you to get that super bright look if you want, or dark and moody look, or neutral look. So anyway, back to the image. Um, I applied Fuji 400H. I'm gonna drop the exposure a little bit. The image is a little bit too cool, so I'm gonna just warm it up a tiny bit. And now we've got, you know, this, is, this would be a fine edit to give somebody. Like right now it looks really, really good. But this is where the tone profiles come into play. If I want to bring in more detail in the sky, I could use Highlight Soft. And if I roll over it, you can see that the highlights in the sky and on her dress are brought back, especially in her dress. It might be a little bit hard to see at home. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit more here, but Highlight Soft brings that detail back. So that is one way that I could go with this image if I want to bring that back. 
This image has kind of two issues going on. One is that there's not much, uh, there's not much of a black point, and that's because there is a little bit of lens flare. You could also do shadow hard. And as I roll over that, you can see that the shadows get deeper and richer. So in, the, in this image, if I hit the J key again, I can see that there is nothing blown out. There's also nothing that's pure black because that would also show up as, as like this bright blue patch. Since nothing is blown out, the way that I'm going to take this image is I'm going to do shadow hard. And the reason for that is that me personally, I like light and airy, but I also like for there to be real shadows somewhere in the image. So with shadow hard, I get that. It comes back in a suit, a little bit in the grass, and a little bit in her hair. Um, I'll show you the before and after. Whoops, she turned the J key off. And it seems to be stuck on there, let me see. All right. Well, anyway, it's showing, it's showing highlight clipping in the before, uh, which is really strange. I've never, yeah, even Casey's like, I've never seen that before. Um, yeah, anyway, I'll show you a different before and after. There we go. So this is before, and that is after. It's a nice edit, and, and in this case, I used shadow hard. All right, let's move indoors. So this image is by Howard Treby. Um, I'm going to show you a quick edit with, so in a situation like this, this is where like Porch or Push is a really good pack. That's just my gut feeling. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to do Portra 400 to push two stops. Okay. The image turned almost totally black. That's fine. It was like super underexposed to begin with. I'm just going to bring up the exposure and the temperature. There's a lot of green in the shadows. You can see it, especially up here in the arches. Uh, I'm just going to correct that with a little more magenta. There we go. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to, um, fix the, the, the distortion in the image with the upright section of the transform area here on the side. If you don't know this area, explore it. It's my favorite part of Lightroom. It just fixes, um, yeah, it does that. It does magic. It's actually a magic button. It has magic powers. It will make any photo most of the time uh, appear straight and level and not be leaning backward or forward over you. It, it eliminates keystoning, all kinds of problems. I love it. So that's something I try to always do to my images. Um, I probably use the transform tool 50% of the time on my images and especially anything with architecture. Actually, I wouldn't even be able to edit a picture with architecture without using the upright section. It's that important, but I dig I digress. Okay. So this is portrait 400 push two stops. I corrected the white balance, the, the temperature, the tint and exposure. That's all part of editing any photo with or without presets. I used uh, the auto section of transform to straighten it. And now I can use tone profiles to change this image's contrast in very selective ways. If I wanted to knock down the highlights here at the altar and get more detail in the crowd and up in the arches, I would use all soft. And as soon as I roll over it, you can see detail appearing like in this lady here, like her back. You can see a little bit of detail appearing in this back row of pews. You can also see that this highlight area, this super bright part of the image is getting knocked down too, as I roll over it. So I'll just apply that and that is just a super nice and quick way to even out the whole image, the contrast range. This is a perfect example of when you would use all soft, you know, to kind of bring that closer together. Um, by using all soft, I can also go up on the exposure just a little bit more without the altar area area being like way too insanely bright.
So there is before and after. And that's just a beautiful photo. So Howard, uh, you nailed it. This is really nice. It is not easy to shoot a really nice photo in a cathedral. It seems like it would be really easy, but it's not easy. It really does come down to uh, placement of everybody in the frame. And I love how the angles in this image, like the, the line down the ceiling and the line on the sides all bring you to the couple in the front kneeling down. So I, I like your composition, Howard, and thank you for sending it in. Okay. So yes, this is an example of when I would use Highlight Soft. All right, so you may have seen this image before. I brought it in uh, because it's a cool image, but it has a, a really bad dappled light problem. So dappled light, if you've ever heard that term, some people are probably shaking their heads like, yes, I know what that means. If you haven't heard of it, dappled light is when you've got little rays of light coming through, usually like leaves or tree branches above you, and it causes a really uneven lighting pattern on your subject. Most of the time you want to avoid it because you, get, you just get splotchy uh, you know, light and dark areas on your subject and it's very hard to edit. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're shooting, for example, a wedding and you've got you know, the whole ceremony and on one side it's like in bright, like noontime sun and the other side is like under an overhang or something and it's in shadow or there's dappled light. It is like nearly impossible to even those things out without using a lot of like brushes and things in Photoshop and Lightroom. So in general, you want to avoid dappled light. Sometimes people use it to great effect, especially like fashion or editorial photography, but you want to use it with intention. If you have an image where you did get dappled light and you want to try to even it out as much as possible, I, I'm going to show you some techniques for that and they rely 100% on tone profiles. So that's why I brought this image in. This is by Matilda Maria Ronshoff, I believe. We figured out she was from where? Stockholm? Stock, like somewhere in Europe, but lives in the Bahamas. Sounds like a dream life. Uh, and I like this photo. So in this photo, you'll see that the man's got a lot of dappled light on his face, on like one side of his face. And the woman's got a lot of dappled light on this side of her face. Um, and then there's, you know, dappled light in the background. I don't care so much about that. I'm always concerned with the subject more than anything, but we can fix this. So I'm going to use, <clears throat> let's see here. Let's, let's just stick with Fuji 400H for now. I think I edited this with Ektar last time. So Fuji 400H. I'm going to hit the J key just to see where my uh, shadows and highlights are. There's, a, there's pure black up here in the window. That's fine. Nothing is pure white. That's fine. Um, I'm going to warm it up just a tiny bit. And I am going to, before I even adjust exposure, I'm going to pick all soft. So I just showed you all soft inside of, uh, inside of a cathedral for a dark and moody photo. Another place where all soft really, really shines is when you're trying to even out dappled light. This happens to everybody. So with all soft, it evens out the contrast range in his face. Let me show you before and after. So that's before, or actually look at both of their faces. So that's before and that's after. Before and after. It's not completely leveling it out like HDR would, um, but then again, I am not a fan of HDR. If, if you do it too much, the image starts to look like a cartoon. And everything that we make, including the tone profiles, are based off of how film would look and react. So film is very subtle, and these tone profiles work the same way that they would on film, but in Lightroom or, or uh, Capture One. So I would use all soft in this image to even that out. Uh, another thing I would do is maybe increase the exposure just a tiny bit. If I wanted to even out his face even more, then yes, you could grab a brush and just, you know, go over it with exposure and drop it down. But then you're kind of getting into the weeds and I don't necessarily like to edit that way. I think they would be probably perfectly happy with a photo how it is. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is go into the transform area and just hit auto again. There we go. 
man, that is like the best tool. We should, we should just do something on the transform section because I love it so much. Um, but there you go. There is before and after in a challenging photo, a beautiful but challenging light-wise type of photo. Okay, let's move on to some new ones here. This is by Jordan Reynolds. It is a CR3 file. It's a very new format. Uh, with an, so this is a Canon EOS M50. Sweet. And Jordan requested Portra. So I'm gonna just assume Portra Original, something from the Portra Original pack. I'm going to apply, uh, I don't know, Portra 400. And I mean, it looks great. I would, I see a tiny bit of magenta in this girl's top. So I'm gonna just zoom out and correct that just a tiny bit. There we go. I mean, I, I moved the slider like five points. It was hardly anything, but now this is neutral. Uh, I'm gonna increase exposure just a tiny bit and the warmth just a tiny bit. So again, you know, this could be a totally fine edit you could deliver this to a client, no problem, looks great. Um, however, if you wanted to bring back some of the detail in the girl on the, on the right in her, in her jumpsuit and some detail in the rocks, you could use, again, all soft. So there's all soft. And there it is without. If you wanted to keep the highlight on her arm and on the side of her face, you want a little bit of pop in the highlights and you don't want the whole image to go a little bit flat from using all soft, you would use shadow soft. So here it is with shadow soft and without, with and without. It's not a, a huge change, but on my monitor at least, I can now see detail of where her legs are and there's more detail on the side of her face. So that's where I would use shadow soft in this image. I like the harder, sh oh, the har the harder highlights so I don't want to touch those. I just want to bring out a little more detail in the shadows. So, all right. Thank you so much, Jordan, for sending this in. And, oh, Jordan's got two. All right, let's do two. This image is interesting uh, because I'm gonna just say right off the bat that it's lit with a reflector or some kind of light, like a soft light a beauty light or something. I can see something in her eyes. It looks like a big round silver reflector. Um, and this doesn't say what he wanted used on it. So I'll just do, uh, I don't know, I'll pick something else this time. I'm gonna do Fuji Color Pushed. 400H, pushed one stop. I'm gonna bring down the temperature just a little bit. And I'm gonna go a little bit towards green. I think, I think she's got just a really great uh, suntan, basically. Let me see. Yeah, that looks natural. Um, if I wanted to even out the tones in this, I could do all soft, like that. So it brings out more detail like in, in her like cape uh, at, at the top here. Um, however, I kind of like the really three-dimensional light. So what if we leaned into that instead with all hard, like that? And by using all hard, I'm actually intentionally blocking up the shadows a little bit. Well, not blocking them, because they're not going to go to pure black. If I hit the J key, nothing is pure black or white in this photo, but it's just uh, adding a little more depth to the shadows. And that helps with the kind of the three-dimensional quality of the light that Jordan made in this photo. So. In this case, I would use all hard. And it, it may be a little bit confusing, like why is he using all hard in some and all soft in the other? Um, it really partly is an aesthetic choice. If you are using all soft to fix dappled light, that's like a very technical decision to fix a problem. Um, however, in a lot of ways, the tone profiles let you expand the looks that you can have with every film type. So just depending on how you use shadows or highlights or the combination of the two, you can get something completely different with the same film, which is awesome. There's a lot of versatility in that. So thank you so much, Jordan. And I am gonna move on. Um, let's see here. 
So this is Lori Claver. Claver. Um, this is a great example. This photo is going to be really fun to edit. Uh, Lori wanted Ektar, so let's do that. So Ektar is in the Kodak Everyday Original Pack, if you are curious. And I'm going to apply it. Wow, that look, just looks awesome, like in one, in one click. Even better than I was expecting. I was, I was expecting this image to be very difficult to work with because of the contrast differences between her and the background, but man, Ektar just is kind of a miracle, a miracle thing. The film and the preset and the style. Everyone loves Ektar. So if you don't have it in your toolkit, you get it. I, I can't think of like one person who ever was upset that they bought Ektar or the Kodak Everyday Pack. Um, but anyway, that's Ektar, a slight tiny bump in exposure. And now I can check the uh, highlights and shadows with the J key. You can see the, the top right's blown out a little bit. That's fine. Um, if I wanted to bring the sky in, I could do that with um, Highlight Soft. And as I roll over it, you'll see that that red patch completely goes away. I'm going to turn that off and roll over, roll over it a few more times. Uh, so there's Highlight Soft, and there's Without. There's Highlight Soft, and there's Without. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see how the sky changes. So there's Highlight Soft, and here it is Without. So Highlight Soft might be the right choice in this case. It brings a little bit of that sky in. Um, and that looks flipping awesome. It looks great. I have no complaints about it. Uh, here is before and after. So thank you for sending this in, Lori. It's really, really nice. OK, let's move on here. All right, so this is, oh, this is Lori Clever as well. All right, she wanted Ektar. Let's do Ektar in this one. So there's Ektar. I'm going to increase the exposure and drop the temperature just a little bit. And I'm also going to see if uh, auto fixes this or full. I'm in the uh, transform section again. Man, that's just a beautiful photo. I, I just don't really have to do anything to it. I don't know how I could make it better. Um, if I wanted to get a little bit of this uh, detail back behind her arm, I would use Highlight Soft. So you can see how that just knocks all the highlights down just a little bit, and that looks really, really good. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do all, or Highlight Soft. Okay, so yeah, there we go. Before and after. Looks really, really good. So thank you, Lori. All right, I'm going to do one more here. This is by Roman Lisovoy. Cool photo. Nothing, they didn't specify which, uh, which preset to use, so I'm just going to pick something. Uh, let's do Kodak Gold. This is from the Kodak Everyday Pack. There's gold. It is incredibly way too warm. So I'm going to drop the temperature. And now for a photo like this where you've got such extreme contrast range, uh, I think I would go with all soft or highlight soft. So here is all soft. And you can see it brings back detail in the alleyway and on her face kind of even, you know, kind of evens out that contrast range completely. Or I could just do Highlight Soft. And I think I'm going to just do Highlight Soft. Um, I don't want to bring back all of the detail in the shadow. I, I kind of like the drama of the shadowy area under her face leading back into the alley. So I'm not going to try to bring that back. I'm going to let that be dark. And I'm just going to knock down those highlights on her face and on her arm. So there you go. Kodak Gold. Really like cool shadows and warm skin, so it's a good one. All right, do we have any questions from the audience? No? Okay, I'm going to do one last one here. Oh, yes. Um, that Ian Morrison asked, would you ever make other adjustments to lower contrast other than just the tone control? 
So Ian asks, would I make any other adjustments besides tone profiles to lower the contrast? Um, yeah, I mean, you can, always, you can always just lower the contrast slider like that if you want. Uh, that's totally fine. Um, I recommend against doing that because it is not going to track to real film if that's important to you. So Kodak Gold shot in this situation would look like this. Um, by lowering the contrast slider, you're going beyond what the film would actually look like. Now, granted, all the film that we test is, is scanned on a Fuji Frontier scanner, which is my favorite way of scanning film. I think it produces the nicest images. So that plays a big factor in the look of all the products that we make. Um, so you can veer off of that if you want to lower contrast, and that's totally fine. It just won't match a film scan scanned on a Fuji Frontier. So, all right. Yeah, hope that helps. You asked one kind of follow up. What do you mean? Oh, what do I mean by track to film? So everything that we make is based on real film. None of these are inspired by film or anything else. Uh, the my guiding, my guiding light with everything that we make is will the preset or style applied on a digital image match a film scan of the exact same image? Scan on a Fuji Frontier. Um, our, my whole goal is to provide really easy to use film looks for you that are accurate and beautiful and timeless. Um, the last thing you wanna do, well, it's up to you, but I think the last thing that you would wanna do in the long term is use something that's really trendy, that's really cool right now because trends come and go and film is timeless. So it's, it's always a good pl place to hang your hat. Um, we have one more question. Sure, yes, go to capture one. All right. All right, let's do this one. This is by Brandy Tool. Uh, I edited this one before, so I'm going to not do portrait pushed on this. I'm going to do, let me see here. Well, let's, let's do Fuji 400H, totally different, okay. So Fuji 400H, um, I'm going to increase the exposure. Their skin and the background, the brick and everything is a little bit magenta. So I'm going to go towards green uh, with the tint slider. And there's a big range in contrast between the blown out sky and them. So in this case, I'm gonna use Highlight Soft or All Soft to kind of bring it all together. So let's see, there's All Soft. I think All Soft looks perfect. Um, and then I'm gonna warm it up just a tiny bit. And increase the exposure again, just a tiny bit. There you go. So I was able to bring both of those things together, the, the bright sky and the darker foreground. Um, I'll show you before and after. So that is before, and that is after. So I hope that was helpful. Um, we do these live edits every single week. If you are not part of the Mass and Labs community on Facebook, just type it into your browser, uh, join us, drop a few RAWs in there. Uh, we'll, either one of us in the office or someone in the community would be happy to show you how Mass and Labs looks on your work. So we want you to have a simple, easy path to get a beautiful edit every time with the fewest steps possible. And we're like literally a community of over 50,000 people eager and willing to help you achieve what you want. So come and join us. Um, yeah, basically uh, that's it for today. Uh, I wanted to keep this a little bit short and sweet because this is focusing on just one part of the system. But in the future, we will be doing other episodes on how to edit for different skin tones, how to get a light and airy look, how to get a dark and moody look, um, anything you can think of. And we have some great themes coming up. So join us next time. And thank you for joining us today. All right, take care. <laughs>